Okay. So hi everyone. Uh, thanks, Lubina, for introducing me. Uh, this was the presentation earlier we had given to the API the Docs conference in Amsterdam. So with a colleague of mine, uh, Kelsey. And uh, then we decided to split into two, right, the docs conference. So she's gonna present this where she is in, in Indy, in US, and I am presenting here in Bangalore. So, yeah. And I work with Salesforce. I work as a product owner for the developer-focused content. And right now I'm focused on automating all of our processes for REST APIs and all the other types of APIs that we have. However, this talk, we are focusing on REST API solutions. So uh, initially we call it as an inside look at a large scale writer driven REST API doc solutions at Salesforce, which was a pretty long title. So I broke it down and I just shortened it as large scale writer driven REST API doc solution. Uh, I mean, when I say large scale is, um, we are referring to a solution that would work across the entire company which is like a 40K employees we have uh, in Salesforce and it's spread across a large number of product teams. We also, Salesforce also tends to acquire companies. So we have many acquisitions and our writers are like 175 plus technical writers. Um, so usually when you have this kind of large scale effort, it goes from uh, it gets off uh, uh, the ground only when it comes to come from the top, top down. Well, in our case, it was uh, driven by a handful of uh, passionate and enthusiastic writers who, uh, who wanted to get things right for the CPI doc solution. So this is our story. And, uh, you know, while I'm presenting, uh, I would like you to <clears throat> think of, uh, you know, any challenges you are facing, similar challenges at your work and see if some of our strategies can be applied to uh, your situation. And I would love to know if, what you get out of this presentation. Um, before we begin, uh, Salesforce is a publicly traded company. So this is a disclaimer that any purchasing decisions uh, you make shouldn't be based on this presentation content. Mm. Yeah, so Salesforce is a CRM company uh, and uh, uh, we offer integrated customer 360 platform that drives digital transformation across all of your business. It connects your the customer to a unified view. So you get a whole new way of connecting to customers uh, via sales, services, marketing journeys, commerce, or the, you know, uh, other applications uh, and, uh, and industry solutions like financials or healthcare. <coughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay, so today we are going to talk more about uh, the solution, uh, uh, talk less about the solution and more about the journey or the process that we took to arrive at the solution. I know solutions uh, that we arrived at is also important in our case, but I think uh, uh, personally I feel that uh, the journey that we took uh, uh, no, and the strategies we, that we adopted were more important to uh, talk about. So that is uh, uh, that is kind of a uh, focus of this talk. And uh, the key players in our journey, of course, are the writers who own the API documentation and uh, no, uh, who own the publishing uh, channel for that. Uh, well, but at the same time, uh, like uh, any uh, any large scale large scale process, it takes a village. So we have a lot of other stakeholders who are working tirelessly behind the scene. This could be executives who sponsor the project or fund that, uh, and uh, you know drive from top down. Uh, we also have product managers and engineers who work with writers and scrum team every day uh, to drive this uh, uh, documentation initiative and uh, you know guide the writers uh, with the right sort of information. And uh, the architects are also important in this case who drive the engineering best practices across the organization and across all the engineering teams. Oh. Okay, so Salesforce is a fast growing company. We have, uh, like I said, we have several acquisitions. So because of this, the documentation landscape is also quite complicated. Uh, these are some of the numbers you can see on the screen. Uh, we have different publishing pipelines for a lot of APIs. We have like 23 plus different API types. And when I say API types, they are not really, uh, they are not really individual resources or endpoints. 
but they are like a type of API which are grouped logically uh, based on the framework being used or the purpose of the API or the the acquisition or the product purchasing and uh, other factors and based on that we have apis uh, like enterprise level api where salesforce salesforce is a large platform and uh, it is uh, it consists of a number of uh, database uh, objects uh, which is essentially uh, you know in simple terms database tables so all of these are the uh, exposed automatically in REST and so forms. So they, uh, that is what we call enterprise REST APIs. And then um, customer settings, user settings, uh, uh, and uh, you know, set of related information is also exposed uh, via API, which is what we call metadata API. And then there are other types of API for IOTs and uh, you know, uh, the Einstein vision and voice. Einstein is a, a AI, um, product so uh, we have a lot of API related to that the APIs to interact with UI components uh, and uh, uh, streaming channels notifications so these are the different types of APIs we have and then there are APIs come, um, based on acquisitions like marketing cloud was one of our acquisitions and commerce cloud was acquisition so these are APIs from acquisition so these are not the type, only APIs but there are, I've listed a few of them so this gives you some idea of what kind of APIs we deal with, and a lot of them are uh, you know, based on and based on different platforms and different frameworks. The tool chain for the uh, uh, for authoring is also different for a lot of these APIs. Uh, so we have uh, and with every acquisition also we adopt one, we acquire one tool chain and one doc portal. So we end up with like ten authoring tool chains and ten different doc portals. Uh, and uh, many of the APIs, which are uh, the Salesforce platform APIs, they are pretty large and uh, a lot of scrum, the code base is quite scattered. So a lot of scrum teams uh, contribute to that. And we have hundreds of scrum teams contributing with new endpoints or new resources. And, it's, uh, and, and then it goes into the bucket of 175 plus writers who work with their scrum team. So uh, this is just to show the complexity of the entire documentation landscape. It's, uh, you know, as long as REST APIs are concerned. <clears throat> and this is one of the doc portal, which is the primary doc portal for Salesforce. Developer.salesforce.com is where all the Salesforce developers uh, usually go for documentation. And uh, uh, as you can see for this one doc portal, we have tried to show different processes that we use for APIs uh, uh, and uh, API documentation. And uh, some documentation is uh, written inside the uh, code and then it is in the specs are generated based on the code and uh, it gets published when writer injects a documentation. But, uh, uh, but if the code changes and then um, the specs change, then writer's uh, documentation gets lo lost. So the red broken line you see is a red dot line is, if you see is a broken process where we don't have the round tripping of the documentation back to the code and the code uh, the doc gets wiped out based on code changes and writer has to follow a different process to get uh, you know, track documentation outside code, uh, code change, uh, outside the specs and then follow some kind of diff processes to understand what has changed release on release. And then there are documents, then there are docs which are completely manual without any specs, which is what we are calling unstructured doc. And uh, then there are docs which are designed in specs, which is a spec driven approach or design driven approach. And we have many such doc portals, not just one. Uh, uh, so yeah, so this is, uh, this the diagram aims, tends to show the chaos that we end up with when we have uh, different tool chains and doc processes and writers have to go through uh, various types of context switching to understand what processes are to be followed for what API documentation. And that's not the only thing that writers do because they also do the help uh, in docs for the end users. Uh, that the Scrum teams develop. So there is a lot of context switching for writers and when they switch between different API docs and then the user documentation. <clears throat> and to complete the puzzle, uh, this is, uh, our documentation is, uh, you know, our customers expect our documentation to be available for every version. 
So we maintain all the versions of our documentation and uh, a solution that we had to look at had to be supported uh, and it has to support the multiple versions. Our docs are localized. Uh, most of our docs are localized. So uh, the documentation uh, solution uh, we, uh, where we are looking for the solution, we had to keep the localization co cost down and also make sure that we and don't end up breaking the existing localization <laughs> process that we have. Um, many uh, document, uh, many products uh, that we have uh, uh, have different release schedule. The core Salesforce products have the same release schedule, but then there are acquisitions who follow different release schedules. So we had to consider this while uh, we uh, get the solution, uh, not focus on you know, finding a solution to support all different release schedules. And <clears throat> while somebody would say that, uh, you know, um, getting code access to writers and having writers document inside the code would be the best solution. And I, I think that is a good solution for smaller companies, but uh, I know when you try to scale it up, uh, it doesn't work uh, as writers, uh, you know, the code base is quite large and uh, it, it is um, it, multiple writers uh, contribute to the code base as, as and uh, we just we are just dealing with 75 plus writers and not all of them come in uh, different skill sets so it's not a scalable solution to have writers go into code and change the annotations and uh, our solution has uh, we also had to think of a solution that was specs agnostic that is uh, we uh, we did not want to limit the teams to one sort of specs so we wanted to keep it open for the teams to decide which specs fit them the best uh, so uh, our solution uh, should support open API 2, 3, or RAML specs that team decide to use. <clears throat> so coming to the goal, the goal that we had was keeping everyone happy as much as possible. So we wanted a unita unified automation pipeline for engineers so that we, uh, we, you know, we, want, we wanted to be able to tell the engineering teams that you get us the specs and from there we'll take it forward. You don't need to worry about publishing part. And we wanted a simple process and tool chain for writers so that uh, writers don't need to worry about technicalities of the documentation, but they can focus on the content. And we wanted one amazing doc portal, which is interactive and modern for our customers. So that is the end goal that we have. Um, coming to the journey, um, we, uh, our journey started with one writer uh, and that is Kelsey not me and uh, she uh, started this with talking to her manager and finding out uh, how we can go on the specs the rest api specs and uh, she got a green light from her manager to find out uh, what she can do on this so she started sitting on all the uh, api governance meetings and uh, made a working group of writers who were passionate so she found like-minded people to work on this problem and who did uh, a lot of legwork these writers did a lot of legwork and this was not their day job this was more like a volunteering thing and we all know how uh, how uh, you know this kind of uh, voluntary projects work where we are passionate about it it doesn't count as a, a, a day job but a sort of a side project um, so these writers did a lot of work and then we also got a lot of friends of the dogs that I'll get into more and then the action part is what get into a solution. <clears throat> so coming to the legwork, uh, we had a, a big working group of writers uh, uh, consisting of seven to eight writers who were passionate about REST APIs and REST API documentation. So uh, uh, these writers researched uh, on the current landscape and uh, you know they wanted to make sure they understand all the problems that what is the problems that they are stalling First step what that they had was just making a catalog of what all the STPIs we have. So a lot of numbers you saw in the, in the, in the other slide were coming from this legwork that this working group did. So this catalog uh, served as a starting point for the writers and then they, ended, they started with defining the standards for the other writers who would contribute to the REST API specs. We came up with the annotated specifications for some of the writers uh, and uh, if we see some of the screenshots, we have tried to explain what each type of uh, spec uh, properties mean and uh, uh, you know, some examples of each of them. 
And we also created a process for documentation for writers so that uh, writers can, any new writer who wanted to adopt different processes, they would know where to go and how to find solutions. And uh, some sort of uh, preview site we, uh, we did with uh, uh, partnership and with the other teams in Salesforce, we got some sort of preview out for, for what we want to look, um, the end solution to look like. Uh, <clears throat> but that is still in the preview mode. And uh, we also started capturing the high level requirements to, so that you know, we can get into the action soon. And Friends of the Dogs is, uh, in our definition, everyone who is not a writer, but interested in documentation. So and they, they, may interest, they may be interested in seeing the documentation improve, or they may be a stakeholder in the documentation, or they're working with customers who are interested in the documentation. Uh, or they're just enthusiastic about getting the docs right. So these are uh, engineers, product, uh, product managers, architects, or executives. Executives uh, help us with sponsoring and funding and driving the initiatives top down. And uh, uh, we have a lot of teams who wanted to get the specifications out. So they would contact us and say, you know, how do I go about getting the specs out? How do I go, go about uh, you know, moving to open API with specs for my REST API. So those uh, product teams, uh, the, we started working with those product teams to get some of the specs out. And architecture strategy is a team that um, who would, uh, you know, it's a, it's a bunch of architects and the company who would uh, define how the engineering teams can best you um, best practice using the specifications and REST API conventions or standards for the engineering team to uh, get a better design of APIs. Uh, and uh, doc ops is, uh, we have a large number of writers. So we have uh, a dedicated engineering team who would support the engineering solutions to, uh, for writers. And uh, we want to have them also in the loop to understand what we are proposing is feasible technically or not. And developer marketing is the team that owns the entire publication of our documentation. So um, yeah, we work closely with them to find out what uh, the end users expect and how we can drive the whole publishing pipeline. And uh, uh, so we started with getting the high level requirements. I joined as a product owner, the, I was a writer in Salesforce and uh, just like uh, you know, I was a I was a part of the working group that Kelsey was heading, uh, and uh, then I moved to a product owner role, so uh, a full time product owner role for driving all documentation automation projects. So we came up with high level requirements, and uh, then those high level requirements had given technical proposals and. And then we had to find the right backlog to move the story. So some of the stories, for example, could have doc ops, uh, uh, we had to move to doc ops backlog or some stories we had to decide which product team would own uh, generation of the STPI and move them to their bucket. So we had to find uh, the right backlog uh, for moving the user stories and uh, driving them. And some of the challenges that we face along the way is uh, we, fi we figured out while we were talking to people is that we were not the only one who were thinking of the, thinking of the problem and thinking of how to solve it. So we, we had, uh, uh, and it's a large company, so we would, there are people who are working in silos and trying to find, solve the same challenge that we are facing. And we found some of these uh, different uh, technical proposals. So our uh, challenge was to how to, uh, you know, corral them together so that it, it can, uh, you know, we can align our proposals together and everybody can contribute to the same solution. So that was one of the challenge. And it, it, it was also uh, <clears throat> more, more like an opportunity to uh, collaborate more with different teams than a challenge actually. And then aligning stakeholders is uh, when um, we, while forming partnerships, we uh, also sort of took, took a role of a TPM coordinated meeting with different executives to get them on the same uh, uh, same page uh, you know, and uh, tell a story over and over every, to everyone so that they understand what we are talking about. 
about the problems and the solution and the challenges so that we have everyone on the same page uh, while talking to different stakeholders. And uh, funding is uh, you know, little uh, tricky in each company. So we, uh, while aligning the stakeholders, we also aligned the requirements for the funding so that uh, you know while telling by telling the compelling customer story so that our asks are well thought out and it looks like a complete solution rather than completing us and answers tracking down answers is one of the uh, one of the biggest challenge in my view because uh, uh, priorities and and are always shifting for the for uh, uh, for any company and uh, uh, then the solutions also has to shift based on the priorities and the uh, landscape. So a lot of answers like localization, how will that work in this solution and uh, you know, who owns what is uh, something I had to, we had to track down those kind of answers on a higher level. And this is the solution, this is the problem we, saw, we showed uh, earlier and this is, uh, this was supposed to, uh, you know, generate some kind of chaotic feeling in people's mind of what we have right now and what we are proposing is something much simpler uh, and combining everything into one solution. So if you see on the top, we have, and this is a code for solutions. So uh, we are not right now, I'm not talking right now about uh, design for a solution where the, you know, right, uh, uh, the engineers are designing the API first and then developing based on the spec design. But this is a code first solution where APIs are existing, APIs are already developed and they are in the code and then we have to generate the specs for those APIs through the code. And, we, uh, and what we are envisioning is all the engineering team should have, should give us the specs in one single place, which is the yellow box you see is a raw API spec where we gather all the specs together and uh, the docs uh, whenever the specs uh, and specs change we are also up, uh, updating a file for different files for the documentation and whenever the documentation is updated writer should get a notification of changes in the documentation uh, that is required and that require their attention so that writers can go and update the documentation contribution and the new specs are generated with documentation and published in the single pipeline in a single portal. So this is the uh, simplified version of the diagram. There are many versions of the diagram we have gone through uh, and this is ever changing solution, but this is quite simplified uh, look at what we are proposing. And the reason why we want to separate docs with the specs from the specs is uh, so that writers can uh, contribute to the documentation without worrying about the changes in the code and without worrying about their documentation contribution being getting wiped out based on the changes in the code. And uh, <clears throat> um, yeah, so this is a solution that uh, we are right now uh, proposing at a higher level and it's supposed to be specs agnostic. So the raw API specs that you see could be XAML, OpenAPI 3, or, or you know, OpenAPI 2 uh, specs based on the theme that creates the specs. So in the end, uh, we have a good outcome that uh, the, some of this is some of the perks of the entire process that we went through and still going through. Uh, so that we have a seat at the table as a documentation uh, and and we we have a decision making uh, and we are one of the important stakeholders in any kind of decision making that uh, that relates to REST APIs at Salesforce. We, are, we have built a lot of new partnerships uh, in different teams and that has helped us and are going to help us uh, as we move along and uh, at the same time, in the, in the inside the documentation team uh, of uh, more, uh, about 250 members, we have become a go-to expert for the STPI documentation, <clears throat> so that any team has any STPI uh, and they want to publish, uh, they 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 come to us to find out how they can do that, how they can initiate the process. And uh, we have come up with a plug and play solution that could work with uh, any kind of uh, REST API project, be it acquisition or Salesforce, uh, Salesforce native APIs. So yeah, and uh, 
we keep our fingers clo uh, crossed to get this out as soon as possible.